Hello, you absolute legends. On the 20th of September 2021, the Chinese gamer YKC did something incredible. He beat the roguelike game Hades with 62 heat. The record before this was 60 heat, which was achieved by Tailesk in the previous year. Since YKC's amazing feat, no one had done any better, and 62 heat was for all intents and purposes seen as the maximum amount of heat that was humanly viable. Hades is a masterpiece of a game. The mechanics, the story, the art, the music, and the sound design are all incredible. And one of the great things about Hades is its replayability. Once you beat the game for the first time, you get access to the Pact of Punishment, which allows you to increase the game's difficulty. The Pact of Punishment allows you to choose what ways you want to increase the challenge, whether it's increasing the damage each foe delivers, imposing a time limit, or taking away certain benefits you've earned along the way. With each variable you increase to increase the challenge, the pact will add a certain amount of heat. As you increase heat, the game will offer you various rewards or allow you to unlock new abilities. At 32 heat, you get your final reward, which is just a cosmetic statue. After this, there is nothing in the game to reward or even acknowledge you for increasing the difficulty further, but you can continue to increase the difficulty. With every single option maxed out, you can go all the way up to 64 heat though this was never intended to be possible to do. The developers just wanted you to have options to vary the challenge to suit your gameplay preference and still get all of the rewards. However, after YKC beat the game with 62 heat in 2021, 64 was tantalizingly close. Surely, with 62 completed, maxing out the game and finishing a run was soon to follow. And yet, it didn't happen. Try as people may, 64 heat couldn't be done. Those final two points of heat seemed to make the game impossible to play. Even two years later in 2023, YKC's 62 heat run was still the most anyone had done, and 64 was still seen by many as simply out of the question. But then, on the 2nd of August 2023, the impossible happened. The runner Angelic became the first person ever to beat Hades with 64 heat, overcoming what is undoubtedly one of the hardest challenges video gaming has to offer. In today's video, we will take a quick look at what made 64 heat so hard, and why many people thought it would never be done. I really hope you enjoy. Now Legends, this video is brought to you by the brand new free mobile browser game Unpaid Intern. Are you sick of your 9 to 5? Do you wish you could run through your office collecting coins and hurling co-workers at your half-man, half-chicken boss? Yeah, me too. Well Unpaid Intern lets you do just that. Vault, dodge, slide, and bash your way through this comical and light-hearted endless runner brought to you by Game Changer Studios. Unpaid Intern has no ads, doesn't sell your data, doesn't include any pay-to-win shenanigans, you just load it up and let her rip. Try to get as far as you can, facing off against a slew of weird and wacky bosses. Playing Unpaid Intern is super easy, just head to unpaidintern.com and you're good to go. And if you click the link in the description or scan the QR code, you will not only receive one of each in-game item, but you'll also be entered into a competition to win $100. Good luck and have fun! Hades is a roguelike action game where the player controls Zagreus, the son of Hades, as he attempts to escape the underworld. Zagreus will need to get through four biomes, Tartarus, Asphodel, Elysium, and Styx, each with their own boss, the last boss being the titular character Hades. Escaping the underworld for the first time is a fun if not all that challenging objective. It's when you unlock the Pact of Punishment that the real challenge begins. It didn't take long after Hades was released in September of 2020 for people to start really testing the limits of the game and seeing how hard they could make things and still escape the underworld. A mere two months had gone by and the player Tailesk had already beaten the game with 60 heat, just four heat shy of the maximum. Given that this happened so quickly, you'd be forgiven to assume that a max heat completion would be soon to follow. But alas, it never came. Zagreus has the option of using one of six main weapons, and Tailesk had been using the bow. Up until a certain point, the bow is amazing. But as players eventually realized, once you get to a particular heat level, it becomes impossible to progress. The Pact of Punishment gives the player 16 variables to make the game harder. 
many of them aren't too consequential on their own. For example, forced overtime increases enemies' move and attack speed by 20%, and each rank adds 3 heat. If you're a good player, this might not impact you in a negative way at all. In fact, speedruns that don't require any heat still turn this on to get through runs quicker. You can make foes have more health, you can increase the price of items in shops, or increase the amount of damage foes inflict. But there are two variables in particular that end up being absolutely killer, when all of the other options are increased. The first is Tight Deadline, which puts a time limit on each biome. At the highest rank, you only get 5 minutes per region, and if your time runs out, you start taking damage every second. This means you can't play it safe, and DPS becomes a major factor. And the second option that is game-changing is Routine Inspection, which deactivates the talents you've built up over the course of playing the game. And one critical talent is Greater Reflex, which allows you to dash twice in a row. Dashing is vital for not only avoiding damage, but for mobility in general. And at this heat level, it is absolutely essential. With restricted mobility, it's almost impossible to survive. And not only that, if you need to spend more time running and avoiding enemy attacks, that's time you're not spending doing damage. And with the time restraints, things become futile. And it should be noted for those that haven't played the game, in Hades, you need to defeat every single enemy to progress through each room. So you can't just run through. Therefore, damage output becomes extremely important when enemies' health is increased and the time limit is reduced. This is why, when you look at Talesk's first run of 60 heat and the 60 heat runs with the bow that followed, they all have everything maxed out except for routine inspection. And to this very day, 60 heat remains the record for that weapon. The bow just wasn't going to cut it, nor were most of the other weapons, but the shield showed a lot of promise. While Talesk was pushing the limits of heat with the bow, the player badge was doing the same with the shield. On December 3rd, 2020, he was actually the first player to beat the game with 57 heat. The reason the shield is so effective is its ability to block damage. Therefore, the restricted mobility is less of a concern. And on top of that, the shield has the Blitz Disc special attack ability. This is where Zagreus throws the shield which spins rapidly, hitting the enemy repeatedly in quick succession. What's perfect about this special attack is that after you throw the shield, you can still block damage. This allows you to overcome both the issue of surviving and dealing damage at the same time. The base damage per hit isn't necessarily high, but when paired with the Zeus Boon Thunder Flourish, which you can find during gameplay, the DPS skyrockets. With this upgrade, every time the special hits an enemy, a lightning bolt will hit all nearby enemies for extra damage. So the Blitz Disc ends up causing massive AoE damage as well. Now that's all well and good in theory, but unfortunately in practice, things aren't so easy, because the boons you have an option of getting throughout the run are rare. Random. And it gets worse when you factor in the Pact of Punishment. Normally when you encounter a god, they give you the option of choosing from three different boons. But with the Pact, two options are removed, leaving you with only one. So you have to get incredibly lucky to find the upgrade you need. Badge knew the shield was the path forward, and was the only viable option for a 64 heat run. And he would go on to prove this in March of 2021 by using the shield to beat the game with 64 heat. The only thing is that this was a seeded run, which meant that he chose the luck that he needed and crafted the perfect RNG. Badge showed what was possible, but it didn't necessarily show what was feasible. The shield did prove its worth, however, when in August of 2021, YKC set a new record of 61 heat. He would then follow it up in September of 2021 with a run of 62 heat. The only option from the Pact of Punishment that wasn't maxed out was Routine Inspection, which allowed YKC to keep three talents. And one of those talents was the ability to respawn with 30% health one time in each room. This is a gigantic crutch, because another option from the Pact of Punishment, Lasting Consequences, completely eliminates your ability to heal. So that 30% health every time you die amounts to a massive amount of healing you otherwise don't have. And you can see in YKC's 62 heat run, he would intentionally die whenever he got under 30% health to get that extra healing. This allows you to take way more risks, engaging enemies more often to do more damage. And given that you need to do damage as 
quickly as possible, this is vital. The simple fact is that if you have to spend more time avoiding enemy attacks, you can't deal damage as fast. Ultimately, this is why the jump from 62 heat to 64 heat seemed so impossible. At 64, not only can you not heal, but you can't revive. And considering the enemies are faster, hit harder, have more health, have more abilities and come in greater numbers, this adds up to an unfathomably difficult task. Because YKC could heal in his 62 heat run and therefore play riskier, he didn't quite need to be as lucky with his weapon upgrades. For example, the Zeus boon I mentioned earlier that is required was only common in YKC's run. For a 64 heat run, it's assumed you would need it to be at least epic, which deals 50% more damage. On top of this, YKC could equip the offensive keepsake Skull Earring, which causes you to do 40% more damage if you're below 35% health, which is the entire time. And it needs to be said again that YKC was able to heal many times throughout the run by dying, which adds up to multiple health bars. In a 64 heat run, you just can't play like this, and instead will need to equip a defense Defensive keepsake, like the Evergreen Acorn, which allows you to get hit five times during boss fights before you start taking damage, and you are going to need every single one of those extra hits. Still, even with all of those advantages, YKC's first run of 62 heat finished with a grand total of zero seconds left on the clock. So just how lucky does one need to be to get all of the required upgrades? Well, in his video talking about why max heat is nearly impossible, Halion attempted to calculate the specific odds, stating this. So with only some of the factors calculated in, the odds of getting a run that is even plausible is about 0.0147%, or 1 in 6,802 attempts. Even if you only use the 45 seconds to reset in Chamber 1 as an example, that's one plausible run every 85 hours worth of attempts. Is it possible? Yes. Is it reasonable? Absolutely not. Needless to say, with the combined luck and skill requirements, it seemed like no one was going to complete a 64 heat run anytime soon. Even if everything went your way, the hardest part of the run is the final boss. And I can't imagine performing that fight under such pressure. Not only do you need to play inhumanly well, but if Hades summons the wrong kind of enemies, it can end the run right then and there. And sometimes it's just not possible to both fight head to head to inflict enough damage and still avoid avoid taking hits. But despite all odds, the gamer Angelic actually did it, defeating Hades and escaping the underworld with the maximum heat possible, a feat that most people thought would never be done. Honestly, at the level of gameplay required to complete this challenge, there are few people on Earth who could actually watch it and have any idea what's going on most of the time. The game is hectic at the best of times, and being able to get through everything without dying at this difficulty level is outright insane. This is easily one of the greatest feats in gaming history, and it will be interesting to see how long it takes before someone else is able to do it again. 64 Heat seems to be at that perfect level where it's just barely humanly possible. If it were any harder, it may never have been done, and if it were any easier, it just wouldn't be as special. A massive congratulations to Angelic on the achievement. Please go and show her some support by checking out her run and subscribing to her channel. The link will be in the description. Also, if you want more information about the run itself, I'll put a link to Halion's video on what a 64 heat run should look like as well. Thank you so much for watching, you legends. I hope you're having a fantastic day, and I will see you in the next video.